Before we get started here, I would like to step back for a second and address a concern that rippled through the comments for the first video in this series. The concern was, this thing is too simple to use or anybody can use it. I don't think so. Though Adobe has a bad habit of inferring many of their complex tools require no code or experience, those of us who've been around for a while really don't pay much attention to this market speak. Since 1984, when I first got into this silly business, I have encountered far too many products that fall into the category of, I saw the demo and it looked so easy. As is so common with new tools that are going to hit big, such as Reflow, there will be the inevitable phase of what I call whizzy abuse. Think of Flash's infamous skip intro phase, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. What inevitably happens is WYSI abuse drops as the pros take over and start doing amazing stuff with the applications, which is exactly what I suspect will occur when you guys take hold of Reflow. As a teacher, introducing responsive web design to my students is not exactly easy. Up until the advent of Reflow, explaining breakpoints and so on in a code-based environment was difficult. What Reflow does is give me an opportunity to visually demonstrate the importance of those breakpoints and the design considerations at those breakpoints at the same time. Which brings me to the subject of this video. Creating a responsive design involves more than wiggling your fingers and having the project magically appear on a variety of devices. The project I'm going to be creating here is based upon a site that I showed my students last year. It's this one here from an Italian designer, uh, Vittorio Vittori. And it's the photo portion of his blog. I really like it because it's nicely blocked out. It's not a canned site by any means. Uh, even so, it offers an opportunity to use many of the major features of Reflow and requires the use of an imaging tool, in this case, Fireworks, to create the assets. So let's get started. Now I'm gonna use Fireworks, but for those of you that are Photoshop users, knock yourselves out, because you can just as easily do it in Photoshop. So I'm gonna pop over to Fireworks and go to work. I started by opening a new Fireworks document and setting the page width to 1400 pixels and the height to 2500 pixels. I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of the hardwood floor look for the background, so I drew a box that matched the dimensions of the stage and using the styles palette, which is right here, chose an old paper style and filled it with that paper texture. So I got a nice little texture going in the background here. Now the other thing I did was uh, work with creating the container, the header, and the footer for the reflow design. So I've now got a container, header, and footer. The, con the container was filled with a very light gray, 238238. The header is pure white, and the footer was filled with a very dark gray of 363621. These colors were all noted because they are going to be used in Reflow. The logo in the header, I'm just going to uh, zoom in on it here. This camera was actually an item from the Common Library. So if I go to the Common Library and select icons, you can see there's the camera. So I had a, a camera icon handy right there. And I exported that out as a GIF. The navigation right here was converted to a graphic simply because Reflow does not do HTML lists. With a container, that was 1200 pixels wide, I could get away with a main image. That's this image right here. I'm just gonna zoom out just a one click, there we go. That was 1000 pixels wide and a secondary image, this house with grass on the roof, that was 750 pixels wide. The sidebar on the right side is composed of three stacked images with text. Each image is 200 pixels wide, which leaves enough room for some space between the secondary image and some right margin in reflow. Now the final step of the process was to prepare this file for use in reflow. 
Now, what I did was I saved the file under a different name. I named it export. And I deleted all of the text and the placeholders for the header, footer, and container elements. The reason for that is they are easier to create in Reflow. Now, what I did was take each of the remaining layers and put it into its own layer. And from there, I went to File, Export, and selected layers to files and selected trim images. And what the trim images will do is trim off all the excess space around the image itself. And then I just clicked export. And as you can see, I've got all of the images for the entire project. With that done, I was ready to reconstruct the design and reflow and to add the responsive features. Before we do that though, let's take a moment to look at how to use a few of the key features of reflow. There in the next video, I'll see you there.